Alright guys, <coughs> excuse me, this is Afro CCW, and I was just filming my thing when I was talking about the Maverick 88 shotgun, or just Mossberg shotguns in general, and then Remington shotguns in general, um, why I prefer Mossbergs and stuff, there's a video on that that I'm uploading at the moment that I'm filming this video. So, um, I wanted to talk about kind of a head-to-head -head battle between these two knives because I have a preference now after owning and using both of these knives I have a preference but there's still things that I like about each knife more than the other alright so let's get started with that first we'll start with this this is my Buck Vantage uh, Select it's a really as you can see it's really definitely a really pretty knife a classy looking knife a functional knife um, but there's one thing that I would not be able to say about it. It's not the strongest knife. Um, this one, uh, for more for the nasty paracord, it's a pretty good looking knife. Look at that. Not too bad, huh? Uh, not exactly the fastest knife, though. Uh, the deployment is not always 100%. But, I mean, it works. This one, it's just a fast knife. It's just out there instantly, especially with that wave that I put on it so that it opens upon being pulled from the pocket. If I was wearing pants with pockets, I would show you, but I'm wearing some swim trunks right now because I'm washing my other clothes. Um, but yeah, this is not the fastest knife. Um, however, the locking system on this knife, this push button locking system, you can see how that moves in and it locks into that notch in the tang. You'll see as I rotate it and click. So that's how that thing locks. And it, when it locks open, it's there. It's not coming out. Let me get some pile of newspaper here. And then I just wanted to put the newspaper there so I didn't damage the countertop. But those are some pretty hard hits. I don't even want to do that with this one because it's a liner lock. And because it's a liner lock, you'll see that the tang is angled slightly so that it locks in more securely. But with that, if it, there's enough pressure on the back, it can just slide the, tang, or the liner right out of the way and then close. So I don't really want to even do that test because it's not safe. This knife, however, when it's open, let me see if I can get this. The two sides of that are flat, and the two sides of that notch are flat, or, the, or this uh, this piece, the piece that moves. The two sides of that are flat. The smaller notch that locks that locks it into the closed position is angled. That way, you don't have to push the button to open it. You can just flick it with your thumb. Which, if you get good at it, you can make it deploy fairly quickly. Still not as fast as the simple flipper on this or the 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 wave. Which the wave doesn't really count for this video because I put that there. But you know. Also, one thing I do like about this knife now, especially now, it has two forms of deployment normally, but I've made it so it has three. But I could make this one have three if I really wanted to. Um, but yeah, so I made this one have three. It has the wave, which I would show you, but you would just pull it out of your pocket while pulling back into the corner of your pocket. And then that little... And then pull the knife outward. Then there you have the flipper, which is extremely fast. Then you have the thumb hole, which I can never make just... There we go. I have to give it a wrist flick to, for it to open. Of course, the wave doesn't really count, though. So this one has two forms of deployment. I like that when I bought it. This one also has two forms of deployment. It's got the dual thumb studs, which just makes it open nice and, nice and quick. Then you have the push button, which once you press the push button, it's just sitting there on a pivot. So you can just flick it if you get the right angle going with your hand. Okay. 
Yeah. Mine's a little tight right now, but it works fine for this. Also, let me get them both out. Uh, let me see. I was going to find a... Let me see if I can find something to prop this against. No way. My phone's standing on its side. All right. One second. I don't know my phone could stand on one side. All right. Let me get that sign out of your face. So this this is the Gerber down from this angle. And as you can see, this thing has no play whatsoever. Okay, wait, one second. And there's a tiny bit of up and down play, but it's so minuscule that I can I can I didn't even notice it at first. I the only way I knew it was there is cuz I heard it. This knife, however, uh, after some kind of heavy use, you can see that play right there. You can't see that play, but there's play up and down too. So this knife can move all around in circles. Um, for just small EDC tasks, it's not that big of a deal, but if this were to go under an extreme amount of more heavy duty stuff, this knife would probably break. Not the best suited knife for any kind of outdoor stuff. I did a baton with it just to see if it could take it. And I even batoned with it with the, the lock disengage like this. And I think it's stripping the screw in the back that holds the two pieces together, which makes it not have wiggle. The screw gets a lot of stress put on it because there's only one of them. Um, so... Oh, excuse me, I had a yawn there. Um, so I'm sure if I replaced that screw, the knife would probably be fine, but I don't know where to buy replacement parts. Also, this is another thing that people complain about. Blade centering. I didn't look at this one. Oh, but what do you know? Perfect. Right in the middle. That is a perfect blade center. That, that's awesome. Let's take a look at this all up on the side. Of course my pivot's a little loose. Let me just twist my thumb in there. Eh, one second. Let me get out my handy kit. Let me get my T6 Torx bit out of here. And do the T6. Yep, get my little T6 Torx bit. And then watch the blade. I'm going to be turning the pivot Watch what the blade does. It's just moving back and forth in there. I could just center it, and then it would be all good to go, right? <laughs> so that looks pretty centered. Now it's a little, it's a little bit tight. I mean, it'll still deploy, but it's a little tight. Still fairly smooth, and there's still play. Centered or not, this thing has play. Um, this one doesn't have a T6 bit. Let me find out what size this one is. I think this might be the right one. A little too small. Still a little bit too small. That was a smaller one. What's this one? So this is a T10. I'm guessing this uh, this one on here is either a T11 or T12 Torx bit. But this one will work. It's a T10 bit will work just because of the way that Torx bits are. Another thing I like about this is if you were messing around and you take off this pivot screw, the other side just does not want to come out for some reason. I'm not sure what's holding this piece on there, but it does, this side of the pivot does not want to come out. So even if it's loose as anything else, I mean, now, of course, there's play like nothing else in there. And actually, even though there's not half of the pivot's not even in there, yet this blade still has less play than this one. Uh, not looking too good for the... Duck Vantage. All right. So 
a little bit tight. There we go. All right, so I got that one adjusted it right again. This one, like I said, is right in the middle. So we're good with that. All right. So I've hit on the fantasy too much. Let's see what there is that's good about it. This right here. I love this pocket clip. It is by far one of my favorite pocket clips on any knife of all time. It is an extreme deep carry. Um, sort of similar to like the SOG knives, the SOG knives. To like the, I think the Flash 1 has it or the Flash 2 or something like that. I don't know. But a very, very deep carry. And it's a strong pocket clip. It looks nice. It's got the Buck Anvil printed on right there. Not printed, um, stamped in. The Gerber knife has a pocket clip normal, this uh, Gerber Obsidian. But it felt like I when I got this one, it didn't have it. Um, but it is a tip down carry, right hand only tip down carry. This one's a right or left handed tip up carry. Now, I prefer tip up carry, but since I normally don't carry this with a pocket clip because I never had one for it, I don't really mind. I don't really mind tip up carry that much either. I just prefer tip down carry. I'll be using a knife with either though. For most of my life, I carried tip tip down knives, so I'm fairly okay with it. Um, the blades on these knives, I or the buck the buck knife is a little bigger. I believe this one has a 3.2 inch blade. I don't even know what it is, but it's a little more than three inches. I think this one is a little under three inches. Um, the handles, the buck knife is very, very smooth and slick, and there's not much traction. But for most EDC tasks, you don't need that incredibly much traction. Um, the Gerber knife is not much better. They're both fairly low traction knives, but um, I'm going to say for comfort, the buck knife wins. The buck knife is definitely more comfortable, and if you get rid of the pocket clip, it'll be even more comfortable if you were to carry it without a pocket clip. Maybe make a sheath for it and make it into a sheath folding knife, like some people do. Um, but this one, this one isn't as comfortable. Um, it's still a comfortable knife, though. This one's just much more so. For comfort, if you if you use your knife for small tasks, like constantly, I would probably just want this handle. But, you know, for what you're getting, I really believe these are both about $30 knives. Um, I think the Gerber one goes for a little bit more sometimes, but I've seen them both go anywhere from like $20 to $50. Depending on why, or depending on who's selling it, because people like to rip people off for some reason. <laughs> um, so this is these are two knives. I mean, like if you if you had to choose between two thirty dollar knives, if you were to ask me which one of these two knives I would choose, I'd probably take the Gerber, especially because of this. I forgot there's one more feature. It can lock open. So even if you press the button to close it, it won't close. And it can lock close, so you can see I'm pressing on that thumb set and it just won't open because of that lock. Then I take turn turn off the lock, flicks right open. Lock it close, won't close on you. Lock it open. Won't close on you. So there you guys go. In my opinion, I prefer that Gerber knife. Um, the Buck knife is still a great knife. It's still a great EDC knife if you don't have a lot of money. But uh, if you want a stronger EDC knife, I would go with the Gerber. It is a, in my opinion, it's a much more superior knife in strength. And uh, the blade steel, the blade steel on it's a little weird because it's their Gerber Mystery Steel. But, um, you know, this one uses 420 high carbon, so, yeah, with steels, I'm not really concerned about the difference. Anyways, guys, this, this video is about to reach 15 minutes, so i got to cut it off. Thanks for watching, guys, and if you like my videos, please subscribe and rate. Thanks. I'm out of here, guys.